Yo, 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 we live on location, beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, 2023 NBA Summer League. We are here, you see the views and vibes, we at the Excess Nightclub inside the Encore at Wynn, Las Vegas, and we are here. I got the blackest one, You know it. he in here chilling with me, we got a very special guest, man, we got Arizona's finest, y'all, you know Bucket what I'm talking getter. about? Bucket getter. National champion, one of the best, hey, and one of the original original members of the yeah, Team Jordan family, bro. Up. We got Mike Bibby in the building chopping game with us. Don't be Appreciate surprised. Y'all might hear the little sounds. We got the views and vibes, man. We got the beautiful pool right here. As we appreciate the hospitality, but you might hear a little bit of something. You know, those people having a good time. We having a good time in here too, though. We got Bibby. Let's do it. Man, we appreciate you coming on the show. Like I said, man, big fans of your game. Appreciate you having me on, man. Been waiting a long time to get on, man. When you first got to the league, who was the first person to bust your ass? John Crotty used to fuck me up. Karate. I he know Karate. He, he, he was in Utah? No, he, he might have been in Seattle, Seattle then, I think. Okay. Hmm. But he just... He used to fuck me up. Like, like, <laughs> John I, Karate. I'm like, I'm like, I'm looking, you know, you look at him like, you look at him like, oh, he ain't gonna he ain't do nothing. nothing. He had a hurt, he was herky jerky, and he, um, I mean, Van Axel, I used to, I was never a defensive player. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, Quick was tough to guard too. Nick the quick, quick, that left hand shit. Yeah. Woo hoo hoo. LA, yep. That was tough too, man. Born in Jersey, but you grew up in AZ. Mm hmm. I didn't know you was born in Jersey. I didn't know you was so born my in dad, Jersey. So when my dad was playing for the Sixers. Uh -huh. So, I mean, I, I think he was driving through, like driving back from a game or something, and my mom went into labor. I don't know why my mom was traveling like that anyway, about to go into labor, but she went into labor on the way back to Philly. Mm. So um, I had to be born in New Jersey. Wow. Hey, that's that's why I never knew. I never <laughs> knew. Yeah. Shadow Mountain High. So just tell us about just, you know, growing up in Arizona, when you start picking up the ball. I always had the ball in my hand. Like, even when I was younger, maybe like 10, 11, I was the biggest guy on the team. Mm -hmm. I, you was the biggest guy on the team? I thought I was going to be like 6'5". <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be 6'5". Because my arms are so long. And yeah. I played center defensively. Yeah. But I played – Point guard, yeah, offense. offense. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I had number fifty three. I was the biggest kid on the team, and <laughs> just stuff hilarious. like that. And, and just I just played ball. I had ball in my hand my whole life. My dad yeah. played, so I was just always around basketball. But I knew I started taking it more serious when I got to high school and just mm. stuck this basketball and just started playing basketball. Man, what do you remember the early years of your pops? Uh, I got opportunity to be on the Grizzlies and he was assistant coach, man. He one of the coolest dudes I ever yeah. met. <laughs> Tell us some of them early memories of your pops just being a hooper. And it was just, I mean, I was I was kind of toward the end of his career. So um, I look at film and now I'm like, damn, you were you were terrible. And, you know, I just, you know, I mean, he, he hustled a lot. He, did, yeah. he could shoot and stuff, but um, it was like, he was a lot, he was away working a lot, man. Yeah. So I was at home you know, getting raised by my mom, and he was just, he was work. He was gone working all the time. Yeah. And, you know, and he and came back around. He wanted me to go to Southern California with him because he got the job at USC. Yeah. And I already made my decision to go to, you know, Arizona. So, I mean, nothing was going to change that. I didn't want to be far from home. Yeah. But I wanted to be, you know what I mean? I want, didn't want to be enough, home. Yeah. yeah. So I could just drive back and stuff. So it was about an hour drive back home. And when stuff. in high school did it click that you felt that you was a – good player to go to a college like Arizona or something like that. I got put on varsity when I was a freshman. I didn't want to play varsity. I wanted to, you know, play freshman, play with my friends and stuff. Um, but I didn't really play that much my freshman year mm -hmm. until like the end. And then I, I scored like 21 points in one game. Then I think coach realized like, oh shit. Like, you got want, one. <laughs> yeah. So um, he used to do the Paul West set. So he'll take, he'll play five players for four minutes and next and five come five in. Man. But I wasn't in that 10, fit. I was like the last guy. You know, I was the youngest. He was kind of older, older coach, you know, played the older guys first. And then, and my mom, my next year, my mom was like, look, if he ain't coming back, if this is how it's going to happen next year. And that, and next thing you know, it was four people coming out the game instead of five. So I realized like, 
you know, I could I could go somewhere with this. You yeah. know, I was I was average twenty three when I was a sophomore, mm. and uh, and then they just started going. I started getting more and more letters. I'm like, okay, this is this might take me somewhere. What about like ranking wise? Like you know, because like your your class is <laughs> some some dogs in your class. We had like, um, it was I remember we uh, it was between me and Shaheen Holloway be yeah, a top point guard. Shaheen Holloway, and ball. back then. They wanted to be a New York guy so bad. Yeah, at that, point. Yeah, and and like I don't think I don't think they he could overpass me. Yeah. So I'm from Arizona. They people back then people was like I don't could play from Arizona. Going from Arizona. Yeah, yeah. no one could play from Arizona. So I, that was the that was the point for us. Like we always used to go back and forth. I only I only played against him in the McDonald's game. That's the only time I ever faced him. Yeah. You know, I went to Nike camp. Played against Mateen Cleese. Mateen Cleese bust my ass out there. You know, I never didn't even know who Mateen Cleese was. Mm-hmm. He came out, and um, I think being out there put his name on the map too. But yeah. I never got a chance to play against Shaheen Holloway. But um, it was it was just good to be ranked like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, well, like it was Streets and Smith. It was it was black and white. We used to have to yeah. see. You couldn't see it on <laughs> on the phones and on Instagram. Yeah. It was black and white. But the Streets and Smith and all that yeah. stuff. When you first seen your name. In the ranking nationally, how was that for you? It was humbling because I never really looked at myself like that. Yeah. You know, I thought I was a pretty good player, but when you start getting put in the top five in the country, it kind of makes you feel yeah. a certain way. And I, I kind of walked around with a little chip on my shoulder, <laughs> talked a little too much shit, you know, like my sophomore, junior year. And then, you know, my mom just told me, like, Jay, just shut up and play. And then yeah. that, I, that's what I got the mode to just go out there, bust my figure like it's something I was supposed to do. Bust people's ass. I figured I'd just go out there and do it. Yeah. How was it when you got, you know, like you said, you talked about the McDonald's game. When you got to that point where you, you know what I'm saying, you top five in the country, every school probably recruiting you. Like, how 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 did that feel, like, when you were at your high school and, like you said, you overcame, like, oh, nobody from Arizona can't hoop and all this, mm-hmm. and you, you showing and proving all of that? It felt good. You know what I mean? Like, even still, people were like, Oh, he can't play. Even even after I still went out and proved and stuff. So just to prove people wrong, it felt good. But I, like I said, I didn't have, like, I just played basketball. It was just like second nature to me. I just, I've been around so long and I just played. I put, I didn't really, like back then I played basketball. I never really was in the gym working, right. you know, but I'd always be at the park and then leave that park and go to the next park. So I was always playing, whether in a small hoop or whatever, but, um, that's what I did. I didn't really do a bunch of drills. I yeah. always just hoop. Yeah. Lot, you know. Then people don't play no more. Yeah. It's yeah. trainers and, <laughs> yeah. and, and, yeah, and trainers Instagram and videos. Yes. Yes. When yes. you heard you made the McDonald's game, like, uh, how was that for you? It was good. You know, you're always watching on TV. And, you know, I was just happy, like I said, to be a part of, like, the top five we had, like, Kobe Bryant, um, Lester Earl, Ronnie Fields, Lester Jermaine Earl, O'Neal. Yeah. Um, Ronnie Fields was tough too. I remember, was that time? yeah, he was. He, I remember he, we, we was at the we was at the Nike camp, and he, I mean, he we're watching dunk contest, and he's laying on the floor next to me, and they called his name, and he got up, and I, was, you know, I never seen him jump like that. And he got up and just did wind me off, no warm up, boom, and came and sat back down. But I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was just you no, know, it's bad that he hurt his neck and everything. Yeah. I think he, I think he would have been a long time NBA player draft, too. Right, yeah. yeah. When you got to that McDonald's game, did 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 Kobe stand out as being like super special right then when you saw him? Or yeah. did, 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 could y'all see that in practice and just, what you had saw leading up into that his, game? His demeanor was just the way he was in the NBA is the same way he was back then. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just see like you see the video of him and Rip and like he was, you know, still teaching Rip some stuff back then. But I mean, you could just see in his demeanor that like, he was all about business. Even yeah. back then. Yeah. When you see them go straight out of high school, because, you know, this fairly new to the guys. You uh-huh. were just playing with them in the McDonald's game, and you see, like, him and J.O. Yeah. I mean, it just, <laughs> but it's good, I mean, to be a part of that class. You know what I mean? Like I said, just have two high schoolers, you know, top whatever they went. Um, it was good to see. You know, kind of be like, okay, I'm part of that class. I'm part of one. I done played on the court. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a leaguer, too. Yeah. I'm, I'm in a good class. Even, like, Stack went out from um, high school too. We had, yeah. we had a few players that they were all on the East team, but they all went. Yeah. You know, they all went to the draft. So I know your pops wanted you to come to Cali, and you chose Arizona. But could there be anybody else that almost got you? UCLA was probably two. 
Yeah. And then maybe Duke was three, but Duke Duke was way too far for me to go. I wasn't I wasn't even thinking about that. But yeah, it was you know at the top three. That was my top three. Yeah. Hmm. One of my favorite coaches is is Lou Oates. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like every time you see him, he's like the same person with the same <laughs> smile, with the same personality. Hair, yeah. and then, Her and is perfect always hairdo. perfectly <laughs> yeah. swung right. To play for a coach like that, like. And I always heard players just rave about him and how good a person he is. How was that for you to, you know, choose Lou, Lou Holtz to believe in you? It was good because going in, you know, they are already established and stuff like that. And, you know, he let it be known that I was going to be starter coming in just after practice and stuff. And just everything, I mean, not even, not even the stuff on the court is what made him a good guy. Like off the court, he, I mean, he, he cared about you. You know, mm -hmm. you go in there, talk to him anytime you wanted, um, tell him anything, and, and he treated you like he was one, of, like you were one of his kids. And, yeah. and that's what made it so easy to go there. And, and uh, his wife, Bobby, rest in peace. Yeah. She even made it easier. You know, yeah. I was a mama's boy back then, and she just made it. She just made it yeah. easy. Yeah, made it made you comfortable. Yeah, yeah. To make the run, Arizona, <laughs> to make the run for the championship. Come on, man. No disrespect, but nobody had Arizona. <laughs> I, I, we did. We were trying to. The funny thing is, we went. That we went. I think we went 500 in the Pac-10 back then. So mm. we were like, "Damn, I hope we get in the tournament." <laughs> yeah, right. like, yeah, you know, we end up getting a. We end up getting a four seed, and we almost ended. We almost ended up losing the first two games uh, to Carl to Charleston and maybe South Alabama. And it was just tough, you know, and Coach Olsen comes out and tells me, like, Mike, I need you to be you. Mm -hmm. You know, I was passive, a freshman playing with juniors and sophomores. Right, yeah. I'm passive. And so he was like, I need you to be you. And that's when I kind of like kind of switched in my head, like, okay. Yeah. And then we played Providence, I think, first, either Providence or maybe Kansas. And that's when I was like, okay, this is what I got to do. And, yeah. and that's when it clicked for me. How was that, the, like, because NCAA is one of the best tournaments ever in basketball history. How was that to win that tournament, go through the steps and the, the rounds, see how the whole world is watching you? It was good because, like you said, no one expected us to be there. Yeah. So it was kind of like we had nothing to lose. So getting there and just, okay, just go out there and play. They expect the other team to win. Okay, Kansas was supposed to beat us. And then Providence was supposed to be us. <laughs> and then North Carolina is supposed to. And so we ended up going. So we, we really had nothing to lose. So we're just out there playing free. How was after the championship the <laughs> campus? And uh, like it was, it, it was, the campus was. was crazy. I mean, we had a parade. Like when we got yeah. back, so we got paraded all the way from the airport to the to the facility. And then we got to go into the football stadium, and all the fans were. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. What was that from the from the airport to the facility? That what was that action like? It was just everybody was just on the street. Pandemonium. <laughs> but we were like sitting in convertible, like on top of convertibles, and there were just lines. I mean, we're probably going like two miles per hour, just shaking everybody's hand. They were lined up all the way to the That's to crazy. the facility. That's it. There's not really much out there besides besides the U of A sports. So. How did you feel about like your your NBA rankings now? You know you you a champ. You know everybody on that team mm -hmm. <laughs> like was like when you a champ. Everybody on that team started getting their rankings go high yeah. for draft and all that stuff. People wanted me to come out after my freshman year. Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't ready. I knew I wasn't ready. So yeah. you know I, I knew that I had to come back and you know probably put more work in. And once. I did that, and I had a I had a really good sophomore year, and I can I knew I was ready. Like it's time ready. to go. It's time to go. So that would, <laughs> after you came back and had a a more veteran, like cause like I remember how your freshman year and how you came back to your sophomore year, it was more like this my shit. Like yeah. I'm one of them. I, like I had more like I had a it was lot confidence, confidence was crazy. Yeah, I, I mean, it was just. And like I said, the work I put in made me feel like that. Like any shot that I took and I missed, I'm like. I shouldn't miss that, you yeah. know. What I mean, just because I just by how much work I put in. Mm -hmm. So you, when, before I got to um, before I got to U of A, I wasn't really known as a shooter. I could score. Yeah. I could score from anywhere. But then once I got to U of A, I worked out with Josh Pastner, and he helped me with my shot. And then I became known as oh, he's a shooter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, I, I mean, it was just, I was ready to go. I mean, I, I got Pac-10 Player of the Year. Um, all-American team, so, you know, yeah. nothing else for me to do. How did your draft process go through? Like, how many teams you had to work out for? I worked out for the Clippers. 
that was it. Like you only I, worked out for one team. I had David Falk. David Falk was David my Falk, agent, so yeah. he um, they got the first pick. You're working out for the Clippers. I'm not gonna let you work out for nobody else. Yeah. So I was like, shit, all right. So I went to the Clippers, worked out, had a pretty good workout too. They gave me like a duffel bag of Clippers stuff. So I'm like, they got to be picking me. Yeah, they give you all this gear. Yeah. All of what can be. Yeah, and so we get to the draft, and they still didn't know up until the draft. So like the day of the draft, he was like, they still don't know. It's like the morning of the draft. So like at two hours before the draft happens, he's like, they're going to go with all of what can be. Did you ever hear of Ola Candy before? No, I have not. You I never not. heard of him before? No. You was like, where the fuck did he come from? <laughs> <laughs> they said he was seven foot, they said, so I don't, I don't know. But at, at Pacific. Yeah, and I think he only had like a couple years playing, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. He had just started playing ball. Yeah, so I mean, I think it was probably better that I didn't go to. I mean, I think everything happened for a reason, yeah. man. And and we went up, Vancouver ended up taking me. Yeah. You know, I'm 19 years old. How, how was that? Because, like, Vancouver had the second pick, and my mama told them, like, nah, you pick. Steve Francis just told y'all no last year. No, he was the year after me. he was the year after you. So I was the year after that, and my mom was like, nah, we ain't going to <laughs> Vancouver, so they shouldn't pick him. That's what I went. So I went up. After I realized they had the second pick, he's like, you're going to go number two. I was like, I don't they, I don't want to be in Vancouver. I don't want to be yeah. in Vancouver. I don't wanna, you know, I, you always dream of playing – in the state of yeah. like a Lakers or the Bulls, right, you, right. you know, you, that's what you dream yeah. of. And being in Vancouver, I was like, oh my. I went up and talked to him. I told him, I said, nothing against you guys or the city yeah. or the franchise, but I don't want to play here. Yeah. And they were like, we're going to pick you anyway. So I was like, damn, I don't want right. to seem like that. So, you know, I, I did it, played my time. And like I said, I got drafted, I got traded to Sacramento. So I'm, Micah Heisley, the owner, was like, you know, we're moving to a new place and we're probably going to start over. So where would you like to go? So I gave him five of my top teams. And he's like, where's the number one place you want to go? And I told him Sacramento and like draft and the next draft, I, you got, I'm in the work. It's like two o'clock in the morning. I'm working out. And they're like, you got traded to, um, to Sacramento. I was like, bullshit. Yeah. I went to my car. I called from Sac. You know, you get traded. You get a call from yeah, you get a one team and the other yeah. team you're going to. So I was like, oh shit, it happened. Yeah, and it, it was the best. It was the best thing that ever happened. I was to doing me. a movie in Vancouver, and I got a chance to just be in Vancouver for about three months. Everybody in Vancouver loved you, your crew, your family, <laughs> everybody, team, dime this, team, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, just how was the. I had time to spend over there. How was it just living in Vancouver? I know it was different, but it was, it's a good living. It's real cool. Yeah, it's a beautiful there. place, but you guys, I, I never got to see the summer. Yeah. You know, I was always there. Get the hell home. Yeah. And it, it was rain. Like, I'm from Arizona, so it I see rain probably yeah. 15 <laughs> days out the year. Yeah. So going there and being in there, raining every day, cold. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, man, I don't know. I don't know what I could do. You have to go through customs every time you leave yeah, and come back. Do. And I mean, it was just at 19, 20 years old, like it was, it's, it was tough. Yeah. And I had a family. Um, my fiance was with me. I had my oldest son. I'm my oldest child and, he, and he's 25 now, but he was with us having him out there being you know, a year old. It's tough. And, you know, just traveling and stuff. It was, it was, hard. It was hard for me. Tell us about Team Dime. Because when I went to Vancouver, Folks was still repping Team Dime. Dime uh, everywhere I go, it was like it was just Team Dime this, Team Dime that. We kind of put our mark in kind of the cities that we went, yeah. and you know, like I said, it all started with my older brother, and he was like, he's right. very, he's very outgoing and welcomes a lot of people in. Yeah. And so, so if you see a lot of people, it was a lot of them was from him, then a lot of people in. Yeah, and um, it's just. Like I said, we he, he's very street. My brother's very street, so it was like yeah. kind of we had a lot of street people with us. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I mean, it was just a lot of his family. You know, a lot of people think like, oh, you have this and that. But you look at yeah. a lot of people that be with us, it would be cousins or yeah. it would be. Yeah, because let's get this correct. You know I mean? Like Team Dime, it, it sounds like that, but a bunch of good people just coming uh -huh. together and just if they see you, like, hey, Team Dime, you know he's safe. Yeah, <laughs> He's yeah. looking out for you. Oh, no, nah, man, I'm team, when I was in Vancouver, them guys was like Team Dime. Every time they seen me, they was just looking out for uh -huh. me. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. The difference of between you playing in Vancouver and the difference between you playing in, in SAC, what would you feel like the difference is? Because I know as a 
the opposite team, mm -hmm. it, it was like, <laughs> damn, he done, we done fucked up. He done got somewhere where he comfortable and he, uh -huh. you're a threat. They may, they, the, the thing is, I never knew how I'd get taken by going there by, you know, White Chocolate, Jace Williams was a, was a big fan time favorite. thing out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fan and favorite. To get traded, I didn't know how the team would take me. I didn't know how the fans would accept me. And fans and the team made it so easy. It felt like I'd been there for 10 years. So yeah. it just made it, they made it that easy. To have a team like that. <laughs> see well. <laughs> yeah, like, Lottie. I had a championship team. Doug Christie, like y'all had all the pieces. Everybody knew they rose. Mm -hmm. Like, how was that to, to have a championship team, to be in that era where y'all the ones that was competing for the championship? It was fun. Was it was fun to see that. This game or this play away from. I've never, because uh, I was used to, back then, you throw in the post. It was different defensive rules, too. You throw in the post, go stand over there, they go mm -hmm. double, you get the shot. Because we had country. Big country, country Ryan yeah. Reeves, yeah. So uh, we always played inside out. Yeah. And so going there, I remember the first day of practice, I threw it in and I run through. Ball, I had to duck because oh, it don't hit me in the head. Web and body right. throwing yeah. that dog. So Coach Carell, rest in peace, he was like, Mike, she's going to hit you in the head. Make sure you turn around and look. Because I'm yeah. Vancouver, you pass and just go run over there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So coming here and being there in Sacramento and everybody could pass and every, no one cared who. Yeah. We knew Webb was going to get all get his points every yeah. night. But out of everybody else, it was, it might be your night tonight. Might, Might be, be somebody else to yeah. tomorrow. So um, it was it was good just to win. Yeah. You know, I won my whole life. And then going to Vancouver, I remember the lockout. We were start out four and four, right? Yeah. We end up eight and forty two. We had like three double digit losing streaks in fifty game season. So I mean, just going from losing all the time to winning, yeah. it was it was amazing. Well, how about Adam and having the confidence in you? Like like, how was that? I mean, he just let us play, and it was yeah. like he knew he knew what we were capable of, and we we were, we held ourselves accountable. Yeah. That's what made it easier. It was never pointing fingers or it was this person's fault. So that's what made it so good too. Let me ask you this: Y'all play seemed like they was catered to you and Stark Stockovich. It was more of just reads, you know yeah. what I mean? Cuts and just we, like I said, we have probably two of the best big men passers that ever played. Um, just try to read stuff. That yeah. was it. That's why I think it was hard to kind of prepare for us because you never really knew what we were gonna do. Yeah. Tell me this: How was it for you? Like you, you one of the uh, inaugural members of the Jordan brand. Like the first time that that Mike said, "Okay, they gonna give him a team or whatever, a Jumpman Jordan brand, whatever it was when it first started." What was it like when you got that call? That like. It was did from, you understand what exactly was oh, happening shit. at the time? I, I, or like, how did you like, what was all of that like? How did that play out for you? It was good because at first it was, I was talking with Puma. Mm -hmm. And so um, they sent, Puma sent me a box. And I mean, it was all like fluorescent. Like back then in the 90s, fluorescent colors weren't really in. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it was like more soccer stuff they sent me. Yeah. They sent me a shoe that was like this long. <laughs> that was a size 12. And like it was like... It looked like it was that long, and I, I told my ass, I said, "I can't wear it. I can't wear this." And so he's like, "Would you? Would you want to go with with Jordan?" I said, "Shit, yeah, yeah." Yeah. And it was done, cause that I mean, we had the same agent too. Right, so he right. was, he was. So I mean, it was like a. But did you understand what was happening? Because it was. It's not like all right. This is like now you get drafted. Somebody call you for Jordan, bro. They, they know exactly what's going on. But like at that point, did you really understand what it was? Uh, I, like it was about to be what it was about to be. I then you probably couldn't even understand, cause right. just like. You getting the shoes in your color. You getting the name yeah. on the shoe, and <laughs> I mean, it was just, it was, it was fun. Yeah, you know, what I mean, back then you just hey, I need these, I need these, and they'll come next day. I mean, it was like that simple. You had to have as many shoes as you want to play in and stuff. I mean, like, like I say, you never know. You until, showing the guys that used to rock the low top. Yeah, too. yeah. But. I think that's what. So I think me and D eight, me D eight, yeah, are yeah. the low top yeah. originators. They are the yeah. world. Y'all can be happy for some of your favorite Jordans to ever Disney come out in low top cuts. because of Bibby Derek and Derek Anderson <laughs> and Mike Bibby were the innovators and, and trendsetters with that. It's crazy because I remember I asked them too. I'm like, can you make these in the low? I think they might have been the fives. And they're like, 
Yeah, I think we can make them in the low. And ever since then, I was like, shit, whatever y'all can make in the low and, and chop them, I'll take them. So, yeah. I mean, regardless, get when you get that new color and you get the color that nobody got, you kind of some, you kind of the oh, big no. man in the locker room. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I used to tell people like, man, with Jordan Brand, you your socks, your tank top, your drawers, yeah, your your shirt, your your jeans or your your, your shorts, mm-hmm. your whole wardrobe is, is Jordan. Yeah, like yeah. you wear any other brand, like yeah, your shirt and your your shorts might and your shoes might be, but not your yeah everything everything. Like my grandmother was wearing Jordans at one point, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like my mom was wearing yeah. Jordans at one point. Right. Remember when they came out with the snake skin pink yeah. jump, yeah, low top like yes. <laughs> like elevens. That's how yeah. Jordan brand come with it and take care of you. There's not a time that I don't wear Jordan stuff. Like I have so much shit. It's like <laughs> my closet, like I have five sections that is everything's Jordan. I mean, that's yeah. like, yeah, I have nothing else. Truly. You know what I mean? It's like nothing else, but it, like I say, it's great, great to be a part of it. Yeah. Like once you're a part of it, you're always a part of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's, that's the good part. What do being a part of it mean to you? Being a part of, like, if you, now as we done retired and you've seen who done came before, how it started, how it's kind of forming out, to be one of the ones that everybody know you as this. Like, mm-hmm. everybody know me. Like, if I don't wear, I had some Yeezys on, they was like, huh. <laughs> like, I seen D Miles, it was cool to see him, but I was, he had them Yeezys on, and uh-huh. it was just like, and it just say it ain't right. Like you say, like because me, they all, yeah, all, all everybody, all everybody. You know what I mean? They're like all you guys, even known as as Jordan's guys as well. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Just the, your guys is your guys PEs. I look at like, damn, I wish they was my size. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that was, yeah. You see, like that's we why, see like, that purple and black yeah, on we, the Jordan. Like, our damn. era of the Jordan brand was like it was what a time to be yeah. alive. Like it was yeah. real. Like you didn't have to be like one of the super superstars, mm-hmm. but we felt like we had our own shoes. Yeah, yeah. And it was of the best shoes that for mm-hmm. us and the yeah. art. Like that, that was the most popular shoe of our generation. So for us to get our own rendition or our own yeah, version, you know, colorway of it. And you know, you get your nickname and your yeah. colors and all of this, then you get multiple pairs. Like nobody can't mess with me yeah. right now. Like when that, when that, when that shipment come to the locker room, forget about me. <laughs> My teammates is anxious to see what's coming out yeah. of the box. Done, they yes. like, hold on, it's like, it's a crowd yeah. coming like, hold on, hold on. To get? Here we go, what are these boys? <laughs> yeah, you know, anybody that way outside, like, hey, hey, I already, hey, you already know, I'm right yeah, here, what's yeah, up? Yeah, like, yeah. And it's like, that's the vibe that it used to be because you, you didn't know how it was coming. It would be like you genuinely was excited. You and everybody else around, it's like we, like, yo. I wasn't even excited, like, I want to see what they got on tonight. That's you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Playing against somebody. <laughs> yeah. like, I wonder well, we they did his y'all. colors for we these shoes looking or for you, boy. I wonder which so ones they came chose out. this year. Because remember, Let's you used to get the little got. preseason, they send you these, and you, you try them out, work out, then you say, all right, I like these. They yeah, just, yeah. I used to look. I used to lie every time. <laughs> lie every time. I get, look, I'm, I'm coming away with all of the all of the renderings. I'm going to get the first three, then I'm going to come back like, man, these hurt my feet. I need you to, I need y'all to come. But when you do it, do them in these colors. Don't do the same color. Like, yeah. <laughs> about to get a whole new yeah, setup coming through, to. like vibes, boy. Like you gotta learn how to jig a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I mean, and you get you get more out of it too. I remember I went to um, I went to I don't know if you guys were there yet. I went to a Nike spot. They had a closet of everybody's PE. So they were just sitting in there. And one of the guys that I was with was like, "Yeah, just go ahead and get what's and just I I took." <laughs> I took <laughs> Ray Allen's, J Kids, yeah, yeah. um, DAs. I mean, I was getting in there trying to get as much as I could. Gary Payton's, <laughs> yeah. I was doing all that shit, man. But like, like I said, like just to get your hands on your guys' stuff, yeah, maybe because we already got ours. So yeah. I, I want to get. Yeah. I could never get yeah, it. Get the other colors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell us about the wars y'all used to go to against with the Lakers. The Lakers was the three P champions of the era, but they had to go through some wars to get there. It wasn't just a cakewalk. It was a championship that we should have got out of that because um Game Seven, we go to game seven, we shoot two for thirteen from the three and under fifty percent from the free throw mm-hmm. and go into overtime. You know what I mean? So that just I just just shows you that I think I I know we were a better team that season. Yeah. Maybe the years before, years after, maybe not, but that year we were the best team I think in the league yeah. all the way around. But going there was just fun to play. You know, I was playing in front of all the movie stars and you know the yeah. raps and all that stuff, and just 
you know, that gym's so damn quiet anyway. You could hear what anybody says to you. Yeah. And it was just good that, like, they used to get on me because I used to talk a lot of shit when I got out there. But um, <laughs> they just, I just hear stuff and just get, me, just get me going and get me going. I, I love playing. Like, that's probably one of the best things I love playing against because I knew going there, it's going to be it's gonna be a movie. Yeah. Do you feel like um, that's where you set your tone out? Like playing against the Lakers, mm -hmm. like a, a lot of the fan, massive of fan bases, they really know who Mike Bibby is because Mike Bibby was busting the Lakers <laughs> ass. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, is that it, where you feel? It was, it was. I, I just loved it. Like I think so. You know what yeah. I mean? And then being a part of it, now we're winning. You can kind of strut a little bit harder and do a little bit more out there. But you know, going there, I love playing there. Like. I don't know. I don't even know why. Yeah. But the buck, the bastard just felt like it was so big. Man, and was there. Center, nah. Yeah. How was that for you? Like you got Weber, who's the best player on the team. You 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 go to start coming off all the screen, but at the end of the game, they want you to shoot the last shot. I was good, but I was fine with that. You know what I mean? It's either, <laughs> you're either gonna make it or miss. And I, like I said, I put enough work in. I expect to take. I took the shots over a million times, you yeah. know what I mean? And and the, the one against the Lakers, the play was for Webb. Mm -hmm. And I just told him, if you don't have it, and you give it to me, I'm gonna knock it down. Yeah. And, and and he, you know, he had faith in me to even give me that, give me that ball. Chris Webber, he don't get the credit he deserved. He came up in the era where a lot of more power forwards was there, but just speak up on him and, and just tell us just how good he was and how good of a teammate he, he was probably the best player that I think I played with, you know, as far as he held himself accountable. You know, you get a lot of guys that, oh, I, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Right, right. And, and, <laughs> Finger pointers. Yeah, and he, he would always be like, shit, that's my fault. And he had held himself accountable, and I think it trickled all the way down the line to, okay, shit, if, if he's the best player on the team and he's doing that, shit, we got we to gotta follow suit. Mm -hmm. And he just – like I said, probably one of the, probably the best passer I played with, mm -hmm. and probably one of the I'd say top five passers that ever played the game. Big man, Big man. Yeah. yeah. Tell me this: How was it playing? Like you know, we we had Turk on, and just like you know, they they y'all had that m mystique. Like when you had the y'all had like the little Euro connection with mm -hmm. Peja, Turk, and Vlade, and Vlade was one of the best personalities. Like, what was it like? Being teammates with those guys and just seeing how they was how they how they brought the thing and then I know Turk was hilarious. So I definitely got to get a Turk story, but like, <laughs> do you got any funny Vlade or Turk? So I feel like Pedro was probably the biggest adult out of the three of them. Yeah, I mean, but Vlade kind of showed me how to be uh, like when I went to Atlanta, I was kind of like Vlade, you know what I mean? And he's just he joking all the time. Joking, I went in the locker room one time to go to the bathroom. He was smoking a cigarette before the game. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, somebody smoking. I just see him over there like, I said, ain't no way, buddy. You smoking before the, right before the game? He put it out and he went out and played. But he was the, he's That's probably one of the best teammates as far as he was, no matter what kind of game he had, he was going to be the same person when the game was over. Yeah. Whether he scored 20-some points, no points. He's gonna be the same person, yeah. and, and, and that that went a long way with me. I love I love that. Mm How -hmm. was Turk? Like I had we got drafted <laughs> together, and I know from rookie transits he spoke zero English. Yeah, How was it, Turk? His when English was still bad. How was English Turk? Still bad. Hey, 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 my boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you really can't even understand him. He was speaking English, but I just be like, I'd listen to him, but just Turk, and you can't understand you anyway. Shut up. Yeah. You know what I mean? But they're all great. They're all good guys. You know, Paige was kind of more the the. The calmer one, chilling one. That was that was that was the uh, the suit man. Yeah, that was yeah. The, that was the, he wearing a suit saying? everywhere. Yep. How was it for you after you know you had you had established yourself in, in Sacramento and you you had a uh, y'all had a great team for a lot of years there. How was it for you to get traded to Atlanta? And it was mid season. Talk about that. That's like one of the worst things. Not just getting traded, but getting traded in a damn middle of the season. But How they, difficult is that? They were trying to trade me, so I was supposed to go. I talked to Kobe. I was supposed to go to the Lakers. Like, really? Like maybe mm. two years before that. I talked to him, and he was like, we're going to try to get it done. And then I think the Maloofs didn't want to end up trading me like in the same conference or whatever. Then it was supposed to be Cleveland. So the year I, the year I got traded in Atlanta, the year before that, I was supposed to go to Cleveland. It ended up not happening. Mm. Then I was supposed to go to Cleveland again the next year. And 
I went to sleep on All Star break. I just got the phone from my agent. He's like, you know, it'll, it'll, you'll probably get traded to Cleveland probably after awesome. the All Star break, and you come back. So I'm asleep, and my son comes in. He's like, Dad, you just got traded. I'm like, no, nah, there's no way. I just got the phone with my agent. Dad, it's on ESPN. So I'm so I call me in. I was like, Dave, they traded me to the Hawks? Right. <laughs> he was like, no, 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 wait. When, I said, Dave, that shit's on ESPN. He yeah. said, let me call you back. He's like, oh, shit, they did trade you. He said, yeah. I, I, there's the only, like, two trades I had that he didn't know about ever. Right. And so – Going to Atlanta, I had a, I had a different role there, yeah. you know. So going there, I was an older guy. Um, I kind of started getting more stuff like, hey, when we when we land, get in, let's go eat at the mall, let's go eat at like California Pizza Kitchen. Everybody go sit. So everybody started doing stuff together more, and getting camaraderie with everybody. And I think that's what made us a better team. Mm -hmm. You know, I took a different role. I took like a Vlad Divac role. Well, you did the, going to the, yeah. yeah, so. I was fine with that. Yeah. You know, I know I know I didn't have much I didn't know how much time I had left and my thing was just try to make these guys have fun playing basketball cuz you could look at them before they weren't having fun. Yeah. You know, coming when I came there I put in games during shoot around and and stuff like that just to get these guys like shit basketball is fun we with each other enough long yeah. enough we got to make it fun. Yeah. I had a good core though and put together a good run like a, a good stretch of basketball like for 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 a nice little stretch of years, like how did how did you enjoy your time with that with that squad and that core unit y'all had in, in in Atlanta with you know you Joe Josh? I mean we played y'all. What year was that? I can't remember what year we played y'all and shit. That was a tough squad. It was fun, you know. Like I said, I was more. I set a lot of screens out there, so now I, I'm like I said, I'm playing a lot. I'm playing a different role, setting screens for Joe. Um, it was just a good game plan. Playing, I don't know, Mike, Mike Woodson was probably one of the best Woody. coach I had mm -hmm. as far as, like, you know, he'll, he'll ask you what, how you feel. Like, he'd always come to me, like, how you feel today? Okay, the guys are tired. So I was kind of the voice of the team. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're just going to shoot today. So it was just all the way good around, like, even the trainers to the good equipment vibe. manager. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, like, I feel I was a big part of that, not – Spent not just specifically on the court, mm -hmm. off the court. I think I helped that team get jail and get closer and stuff too. Yeah, I thought you made an All Star team in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. I thought you should have made an All Star <laughs> team in Sacramento. Then you crazy. There was supposed the to be. Same? There was supposed to be. I think like two years. That I was. I thought I was gonna make it. Yeah. And um, it ended up not happening. But you know, I mean, I felt. I did. You know, I mean, it was, it was not everything. Not all about being an All Star, or All NBA. I, I had fun. I was blessed by playing, doing a thing that I wanted to do and, and, and fulfilling my dreams. So I was cool with that. You played with the Knicks during Lynn Sanity. <laughs> like, tell me what that was like to be, to like to experience and see. And like, you was actually on a team when it happened. Like, yes. so you saw the crowds, you saw how everything it went crazy, from here bro. to like out of this world. Like, tell me about that whole transformation and what that was like seeing it happen. So, so this is how it happened. So, you know, me and Baron Davis are the point guards. Mm -hmm. We both 35, 34 mm -hmm. years right, old. Right. So, um, we go to, we, we go to, we play the Warriors, so they bring him in because I think either Baron Baron might have been hurt, so they brought him in to back me up, and so I got hurt that game. So they were going to let him go before we went back, but they didn't have no point guard no more. So they ended up keeping him, and we go there, and it was like I tell everybody this all the time: it was like angels in the outfield, <laughs> like the way I mean, like just why like, he was going. <laughs> yeah, and it was just like the way the ball would hit hit the rim and go in and I was I could hit the side and roll up and you know, I was like there's some angels in the outfield shit. Like this shit like <laughs> like what like there's some crazy shit going on but like he was out there he was killing. Getting busy. He was killing people and it was just just to see like I mean the garden was rocking. They had his jerseys. They took everybody else's jersey out and had his jersey in it. So they took Mellows out, they took like, Stoudemire's what out. What was that like to experience, like like from a team perspective, like to watch this phenomenon happening and then just to see how the whole world was responding yeah. to it? it? It was crazy. I mean, like it, it's, and like you can't even explain it. Nothing That's, you it, ever there's, seen. There's nothing, that, cause I'm over there like, Everybody's like, oh, they ain't man he didn't even game. have an apartment at this That's point. He I'm was saying. living yeah. on, he was the, supposed, he, on the he one wasn't supposed to leave. <laughs> he was supposed, they were they were about to send him home, but, yeah. but we were hurt. You know what I mean? So they were the only point guard we really had, and so um, they used Shump for a little bit. But uh, he came in, and I mean, I don't think anybody expected that to happen at all. 
You know what I mean? I still think it was Melo's team. Uh, yeah. and, and I think once D'Antoni left and then Mike Woodson kind of like hit the Melo, this is your squad. So it kind of, you know, fell off after that. What it mean to you when you have your peers, like uh, guys that appreciate your game, the way you played the game and you carried yourself and and just how you played the game, and especially like up and down the West Coast of so seeing the kids from California all the way to Arizona. Mm-hmm. I mean, it feels good. You know, like you see you see younger players now today that come up and shake my hand, and um, it's just a good to be a part of the NBA at a good at a good time. You yeah. know what I mean? And showed that, like you said, I wasn't an All Star, but I thought I had a pretty good career. Yeah. And and that's the best that's the best feeling in the world. Man, just, the way your game is, what would you be doing to these folks right <laughs> now? <laughs> if you, <laughs> if you, you, you come off the screen pulling that thing, uh, I'll I, I be having fun. I know that. I'm looking at it now. I just I'll be having fun. I know that. Straight up. <laughs> This is one of the things, like as a as a as a Jordan Brand athlete, right? You 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 notoriously known for one of the ones who got the craziest collection. We did, we talked and laughed about the secret stash at the <laughs> crib. Like when when you first started, like you know what I'm saying? Because like you say, you never know how this is gonna go and what was gonna come with it. Like when you first started getting those huge boxes and packages, like. Like when, like where did your mind go? And then when did you come up with the idea that I'm gonna take? Like I'm gonna keep all create, this shit. I ain't like, like, I'm gonna create this. Yeah. I'm gonna keep everything. I'm gonna create this 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 stash spot that is legendary. Just like the the most secret sneaker stash spot. And we know that you go out of your way to make sure you get the most elite thing. So when did it get to, to become like a? I feel like for you, this is a passion. Like mm-hmm. it's not like like for me, I just get whatever and it's mm-hmm. cool. I don't like search out or seek out, but like for you, I know you you didn't seek, sought after the rare items and all that. Mm-hmm. So like, tell me like, when did you get super, super passionate? And like, I consider you like a real sneakerhead. I don't consider myself a sneakerhead. Mm-hmm. So when did it get like that for you? I grew up with not much, you know what I mean? So like what, to get at the best shoe, right. mm-hmm. at any, with one phone call, anytime <laughs> you want, it was a, it's a dream come true, man. And, but like ever since then, like, I get. I see the boxes come in. It was like be like fifteen boxes. You know, when you get that elite pack, mm-hmm. everything's in there. Right. Yeah. I mean, like socks, do rags. You. I mean, you getting stuff yeah, that you probably won't even wear, but stuff. you're getting everything. And I just like, you know what? I, back then, I'd be like, okay, I have a, a shoe that will come in. I like. Send me ten of those, and they'll send me ten pair. And next day, boom, put them up. If I if, if I like that's why if I like a shoe I need ten of them and put and put them up if fifteen of them put them up and that's I just probably wear two of them and put I the probably did one up. I I put all of them in there mm. I get one and I beat mine up so, up yeah so I beat mine up so my son gets mad at me like there ain't no way you wearing those still mm. yeah I'm gonna wear them don't wear just to know this. I got crispy <laughs> if I want to do any of your kids wear the same size my you? son does and he he's in my all closet in every style. day. Dad, you ain't gonna wear these. You can't have them. <laughs> you cannot have them. He don't even go to the store hey, shop. He comes straight yeah, to you. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, when he say you can't have them, I believe that he is not giving them joints to like, no, you cannot. Like, I, I, like I, I wear a size 18. Like, oh, I, yeah. I, I never had to share my shoes <laughs> with nobody. Like, do now. In, the hood, <laughs> in the hood, I left my shoes in front of the, outside in front of the school. And when I came back the next day, them shoes were still <laughs> outside in front of the school. Like them damn skis. So now my son wore 18. I, oh, told him, I said, man, I ain't never in my life had to share shoes with nobody, man. He but was 18? How old is he? 15. Dang. Yeah, he was outside 18. <laughs> so with my son. Dang. Yeah, so. See, my, all my boys, I mean, it don't matter. They were 11. They're going to make it work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, well, 13 no, we and that, work yeah. Pop. Yeah. They wearing that size. They wearing that size. I'm sure you see it just like we see it. When you hear everybody talking about, you know, oh, man, the Jordan athletes, man, top five is Bibby, you know, or Ray or whoever. Like, I want to know, like, forget about it because we know as 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 the guys, we know that everybody had crazy, crazy, crazy. I still say all the time Ray is the, is yes. the GOAT because he had those championship runs yeah. in, the, in the brand. But for yeah. you, just what's your top five shoes you think you that you like if you had to pick? I'll go with... The nines first, which which patent leather uh, sack Sacramento. Yeah, I'll go with the five Sacramento, two Atlanta. 
I remember those. Two in Atlanta. I had um, 12 Sacramento, Purple, and then I have to go 12 Atlanta. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Now, as you said, <laughs> I just thought about it, but like, nah, because them people sleep on the twos, bro. They yeah. don't get enough respect. I had twos in LA and New York. Yeah. Fucking fire. Yeah. Mm. Crazy. Both of them, New York and LA, crazy. When, when, when was the what was the first low top shoe? Yeah, you when got did you start that? You what was the first shoe you kicked that off with? I think it might That's have been. The, I think it might have been the fives. I'm thinking it's the fives. I remember looking at them, and I was like, "Can you make these into a low?" And he was like, "Yeah, we, I think we can." And then they cut into a low. So I was like, "Shit." If you get shit, you might be able to make that, everything in low. Low eights yeah. and everything. Yeah. Are like, why, like, why lows? Because we so scared to twist our ankles and you went low. I don't know. I mean, just try to be different, I think. You know what I mean? I just. Were they lighter or something? Nah, but <laughs> I, I can't believe, like, I put my shoe in them now because you know you have to put an insole in them. I don't yeah. even know how my foot was coming out, like, would come out. I don't yeah. know how my foot even stayed in. Like, that's how low they were. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I just, I think I just wanted to be different. Like, you know what? Let me, let me yeah. check and see if you, you used get to get these your ankles tape? Yeah. You get the ankles tape. Light, though. It was light. I didn't really yeah. want to. I always get light just to have light something tape. on. Yeah. yeah, light tape. Yeah. How was it for you to, like, you know, you coach your sons, your nephews. You got, you know, you and Eddie House are family now. He got, he got sons and this hooping and balling. When did you decide like I'm a I'm a I'm gonna become a coach like a, have a program and, and coach in high school like when did you make that decision? I coached my son since he was nine, so I had an AU team since he was nine, and my thing was to just make sure these kids get taught the right way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Regardless if he's my son or not, you know, make the right play. And mm -hmm. so I did that with all the kids, like even in high school. Boom! I don't care what you do. I, when I ran my high school, we ran it kind of like a college program. We watch film. We have shoot around. This is three ways we're gonna play this guy. That one guy that scores twenty some points. He don't. See, he see two people every time. Yeah. So we had shoot around classes. Uh, if you're if you're messing up in class, you got to go to study hall before practice. So we did all that stuff, and to get them ready for the next level. And we played. We're the only public school to ever play in Geico National Championship. We played there twice. Uh, nobody over six five, mm -hmm. and but we were top team in the country, and it was just that these kids bought into what I was saying and knew that I was trying to help them. Yeah, so that made it a lot easier. How dope is it to have the success you had at your alma mater? Go back to the same, you know, what I'm saying high school you went to, and, and, and become like a powerhouse. Like yeah. it was crazy fun. record it one forty and six, <laughs> six out of seven state championships. Like we, we what won the, like seventy. Like, we won seventy five games. We won seventy five games in a row. Seventy five straight in state. So like we, I take them. That's I, world domination in the state. We play, like I, we play in all the terms. We play against James Wiseman, Isaac Okoro, mm. um, uh, Shreve Cooper. We play against right. all the. I'm mm. taking them to play against all these guys. So when we come back and play. These regular public schools, we went in by 60 points, 70 points, and mm -hmm. just, you know, I mean, it just got them prepared, prepared to win those championships. In Arizona, you kind of was part of that first wave of guys who started, they, Arizona just started pushing pros out mm -hmm. <laughs> left and right after y'all got, to see where, the, where it's at now. And that's what I was saying. Like, they didn't think people from Arizona could play. And yeah. I think once I came out of there, they started – looking a little bit more because it wasn't there was only like back then it was only like two probably two aau teams out there yeah and so we were all kind of on the you know the same one yeah and so then like growing up younger but um it's good to see everybody a lot more people coming out of there mm -hmm. you know when you seen watch the playoffs this year and you seen the beam how the fans was crazy or that first golden state game when the fans were crazy did that give you like goosebumps and chills or, or memories of yeah, when you was great in there? Memories, um, and the fan base was doing that. The fan, I mean, that's probably the, wherever I played. That's probably the best fans that <laughs> I, I had seen. The cowbells, bro. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Like, how was that for y'all? Like, when did that start? Like, when like I think they it started, started Lake when we were playing the Lakers. So like, what did y'all as a team think? Like, what the hell is they got cat? Like, what? Yeah, like, how is this place is rocking? That's like, the weird right, thing. Yeah, that was they, the one thing. It was fever pitch loud. It was, that yeah. was the one thing you always remember about Arco. That bit, it was loud as hell in that like. That's the reason why I wanted to go there because I remember you know the end of the season, I'm with the Grizzlies. 
the one twenty games out eighty, eighty two. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, you are. so you going in, you're going in there. We played Sacramento. I think we played them twice my last game of the season. So we were all ready to go home anyway. And I walk into the stadium and it's packed. Like 18,000 right. people in there. I'm like, this is where I want to play. Because, yeah. I'm, you know, when we go to these other places, you know, you get 7,000 people yeah. in there. Ain't nobody want to see it. And they Grizzlies. want a crazy good team. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so going there and seeing 18,000 people in the stands to watch them play the Grizzlies in the last game yeah. of the season – this somewhere where I want to be. Yeah. You know? I have a start bench trade for you. Mm-hmm. Dame Lillard, Kyrie Irving, Steph Curry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Start? You got to start Steph Curry. Two mean chips. Yeah. Then Dame. Well, well, let, let, me, Dame. let me take Steph out since you, you just. <laughs> AI. Ooh. I'm, you know I'm going with AI. I got to start AI. AI, you know, it, he changed. He's changed a lot of stuff for you know when we were growing up. You know, got everybody got tattoos probably because of him, mm-hmm. cornrows stuff like that. <laughs> and it's just, and it's just because not just because of basketball. I'll go with Dame next. I love Dame's game. Mm-hmm. I love Kyrie too, but Dame just how much of a dog he yeah. is. I love it. Yeah. And he wants that last shot, and he yeah. wants the ball in his hand to end the game. And when he hits the shot, he acts like, you know, that's what he's supposed to do. Yeah. And so that, that's all it's about. You didn't clearly seen your fair share of nice contracts when you was in the league. Mm-hmm. This question not about, like, you know, obviously you took care of mom, dude, you took care of home. Like, what did Bib do when you wanted to treat yourself? Like, after you got that bag and you, you know, you got this situation, you got that situation. I want to, like, I might, you might look at it like it was dumb now that you a grown uh, man. But, like, what did a, you do I to treat yourself? I went and got yourself? a Rolls Royce. Ooh, mm. double law. <laughs> Double law. Yeah, that one I'm talking yeah, about. Not convertible. Oh, drop head. Oh, the convertible yeah. drop head. What color? Uh, black. Okay, see, he with your vibes. I get white every day. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I had um, to go get that, man. If, if you had to, you had a lot of teammates over your career. If you had to pick four other teammates to make a super five with you, who would be them other four Any teammates? Any team you played you? on. Joe Johnson. Mm. <laughs> Weber. I so Joe. So Mello. Man. Mm. LeBron and Wade. Hey, hold up. He going to have a hell of a five. Like, that <laughs> hold was, on, hold on. Is that five? Yeah. That was that six. Mellow? That was six? Because you, you didn't oh, include, you you include, include him. him. Yeah, but, like, you still got a hell of a six man with whoever you want to put a six man. <laughs> yeah. That man just said, damn. <laughs> C-Webb, JoJo. Mellow. Mellow, LeBron, D-Wade. So you got you got Webb at center. Mm-hmm. Brian at power forward. Mello at the three. Mello at the three. Joe Johnson at the two. No, D. Yeah. Wade at the two. He's one yeah, of the two or one. He's one of any exchange. Wade at the one. Put Wade at the one. Put, <laughs> put Joe at two. Let, let me ask you this, though. So, like, we know about the secret stash, the secret vault, and how you 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 one of them people that went went the extra yard to make sure it's, it's, some, it's some top flight top flight security <laughs> stuff sitting up there. What to you, if you had to pick one pair, what's your – uh, most coveted pair, like you know what I'm saying? Because I know the one that you ain't gonna wear ever. That's like I got, that's like, gonna I got two put pairs. Just like I don't the even show online, everybody. Legendary. <laughs> I got I got the one pair of the Eminem joints, the black and silver, like, Derek like, Jeter's. Two. And then, yeah, no, the four. Is it the fours? I think it's the four. You got the four. You got a two. You got a two too. It's a four. Oh no, I got the two with the yeah. dollar right note. Yeah, I got yeah. that. That ain't one of the ones that's like out there like mm-hmm. a fifty thousand. I'm talking about the ones. I don't, like, I don't have nothing like fifty thousand. No, nah, I got that. The, I got I got the fours, the the Eminem fours, uh-huh. and then I got the Derek Jeters. See, I don't have that. came out. I don't have they, they, <laughs> so with, you you probably got the low cut because we all yeah, got, definitely yeah, got the, the low, low cut. cut them yeah. suede joints. You talking about strings, the? You talking about the eleven? The eleven, yeah. the low cut. Yeah. There's a mid. Pit. Yeah, that's what I seen. I seen. Them. I have that pair. That's Damn. what we, we had. They we had we had Jeter on here, and I was like, you, I got my pair. I was like, well, I, I don't, <laughs> and this is what. See, this is why for me it's like a big deal because uh-huh. I ain't never looked for shit. I ain't never asked for nothing. Yeah. I just got it. And I, I when I found out it was even worse, son, I was just like, oh, okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I ain't never went that extra distance to try and get nothing. So to have, like I said, that Eminem pair, that pair, them was the ones that's like when you look on the internet, like, like them some $1,000 shoes yeah. right yeah. there. It's like, oh, shit. So like for you, 
What's your most, and we know you got stupid dumb heat. What's your it's most not, I, coveted I, pair? I have. I mean, like, I put, I get stuff, and I just put the shit away. You know what I mean? Like, I have so much in there that I don't even know what like I got. Some, someday you're going to go look, and you're not even going to, you're going to trip I, yourself I out on yeah, something. Yeah, so I mean, like, I don't, and I have a lot of them are still in the boxes, so I don't even, like. Everything's still in the oh, boxes. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I don't throw boxes away or do the clear boxes. Everything is in the original box. Lego. Yeah, that's what y'all be playing. Y'all be playing <laughs> Legos with the boxes. And this is the other boxes. thing. This is the other thing. Like, tell me, real me, tell me, has this, with shoe tell me, has this happened to you before? Because this has literally happened to me a couple times now where you got so many shoes, you've had them for so long. It's been times I done went to the storage for different things to put something in there, and I'm just like, let me go through this. And I see something, man, I'm going to just take these. This other thing. Tell you, I'm going to rock these, whatever. whatever. And you walk out of the motherfucker like the soul fall off or something. <laughs> yeah. Have you had that? Like the, how many all times? mine's all my I got it's in air condition. So I've I've given shoes away before. And, and people and people are like, damn, Mike, I said the shoes are like twenty five years old. It, then they, ain't nothing that, that can happen. They're gonna fall apart. You know what I mean? But they I mean, are these real? Yeah, they're real, just old. They're old. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know real what I mean? Talk. Like I yeah. was, I'm talking about I'm at downtown Disney Springs going to the movies with me and my wife little day night. <laughs> I was thanking God that, you know, it was like we got out at like one or whatever. I'm walking from the car to the garage to the valet, bro. The soul came off that joint. I'm walking, I'm like, I'm trying to make a key. I'm like, I'm gonna just keep going until I get there. I'm like, boy, that boy just came. Oh. I had to pick it up. I said, fell I had on a wrestling or a boxing shoe with no soul. I was like, boy, this cold blood. So it's blue, the blue. Yeah, I was like, I'm gonna get some new shoe. I gotta yeah. get a new pair. I said, this pair I pulled out was way too old. I said, yeah. this is Good Lord. Yeah, it happens. I mean, I, like some of my game shoes that I wear now, still like the, the bottom, like yeah, it came off. Do you remember the uh, the Jordan photo shoot we did here in Vegas at the what was it at the Hardwood Suite when we had the dominoes? There, it was like me, no. you, you was there, Joe was there, Rip, Ray, Finn. I don't remember. At the Hardwood I, Suites. I remember the photo shoot we did in California, like on the beach. You did the one on the beach? Yeah, that was an earlier one, but I'm talking about you was at the one here. I don't here. remember that. Bro, you was here. Josh Howard was here. Like, I remember your brother. We went out. <laughs> you remember. tripping. It was at, was it the Ponds? It was at the, 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 the Ponds Kings Hotel at the, 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 the Hardwood Suites. I don't it remember that like photo shoot. It was like a whole shoot. thing, bro. Like, you in the pictures and everything in the magazine. We had the, you ain't never get the oh, Jordan yeah, yeah, Dominoes, yeah, 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 the Jordan yeah, 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 Dominoes yeah, yeah, we got. Yeah, we yeah, took from the shoot, yeah. I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we took all, we took the picture in the all black. You yeah, know what I'm with the about? suits. Yeah, and then we yeah. got that big ass, yeah. big ass, big dog. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I'm talking about I remember the picture big monstrosity yeah. picture. Yeah. Like, I got boy, that we all up, had the yeah. black suit outfits and it was like some gangsters. Yeah, the mom, come on, bro, you was there. I'm not forgetting this, you were there. I got a bad memory, man. That was my experience with Team Down when I met your brother. I'm like, man. God damn, it's how many of these are. Like, you know what I'm saying? And they, they, we all motivated and yeah. moving together. I'm like, yeah, yeah, but like, that was that was a fire shoot. Like, CP was yeah, there. You remember yeah, CP, yeah. Ray? They had all of the, and then Mike was there. Like, it was like, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. This is like the, you yeah. know what I'm saying? This was like one of them ones. That was a good one right there. I do remember that. I do remember that too. That, yeah, well. man, we back in the place where it started. This man been to Vegas too many times. Man. That's a man. We had the legendary, the big time. We got Team Dime in the building, Arizona's Go finest on. man, Mike Bibby Appreciate in the it, building. Man. Tune in.